Welcome to this episode of Triple Sec Channel. In this episode, I will cover a control flow graph and how we can use Ghidra's API to create control flow graph. Let's first describe what is control flow graph. A control flow graph is a representation of all execution paths uh, of the program and based on um, you know the input to the program one of these execution paths will be executed at runtime using uh, you know control flow graph is pretty helpful for um, program analysis in static analysis you have control over all execution paths and in dynamic analysis such as fuzzing uh, based on the input, you can um, understand like which parts of the program was covered for this specific input, uh, and you can like measure the coverage. Uh, in control flow graph, uh, each node is a basic block, and the edges uh, show uh, the conditional or unconditional branches or function calls. Uh, in this episode, before jumping to the practical example of Ghidra, uh, I want to inform you about a technical challenge uh, in this episode. Uh, unfortunately, there are not many code examples of Ghidra on the internet. Um, and in order to understand how to create a control flow graph of Ghidra, I, con I contacted Ghidra's developer. And uh, based on the answers I got, uh, and also by reading the Ghidra source code, I decided to uh, create this video. So if you find any technical issues or if you have any comments, feel free to contact me or feel free to um, write a comment uh, for this uh, video. Okay, now let's uh, start our practical example. Okay, here uh, I have a, a code that I uh, wrote pe previously to save time. Um, you know that, as I said before in my previous uh, videos, uh, in order to run the uh, Ghidra's uh, script, I need two Python modules. Um, I need one Python file uh, to run the Ghidra script and another Python uh, file is uh, the Ghidra's script itself. Uh, in the run.py, I have to actually run a command which will run the Ghidra's script. In the run.py, I need to, in the command, uh, I need to actually uh, mention the path to the headless analyzer binary which, which will run the Ghidra script and um, a path to the project uh, directory uh, so um, you can make any directories. I created temp, uh, you know, directory um, on the current project and then, you know, mention its path. Um, and the next thing is the binary name and then you can, you know, uh, import the binary itself. You have to uh, define the, the path to the binary and then you should mention as a next <coughs> next uh, actually argument, you should mention uh, the path to the Ghidra script. Uh, but because the Ghidra script and the run.py are, are in the same location, so I just use the Ghidra script.py after you know uh, mentioning the path to the Ghidra script, you can pass any arguments to to the script itself. Uh, for example, here uh, I have uh, one of the binaries, uh, vulnerable binaries of Juliet Test Suite dataset. Uh, the binary contains a stack-based buffer overflow, and um, you can see the path. Uh, of the binary and uh, in this specific binary, this is the function that I'm looking for. So uh, I will pass the function name to the Ghidra script and in the in the main um, function, I will get uh, all, this, 
arguments um you can you can pass as many arguments as you want um and you know you you can just to get the arguments it's like a list so argument zero argument one two and etc but because i have only one argument so um i i just write it to to get the, the first argument which is the function name now i will run the code um, and uh, i will debug it step by step to show how i could create the control flow graph using Ghidra's api so let's uh, run the python dot uh, the run dot pi I actually put a breakpoint at line 64 before jumping to the create CFT function. And you'll see that we are here. So I will step into the create CFT function, which is at line 8. So uh, now let's um execute it line by line run it line line by line okay so um as as you could see in previous videos also the, the very first step to get the program is uh calling the up uh, you know uh, this get current program so get current program will get um will return actually an object that by using that object you can have access to many different functions you can have access to the binary information such as binary executable path such as binary format such, such as the compiler and many different information and uh, also you can have access to the functions which i will show you um, in a second if I run uh, this line and just print the current program, you'll see that the current program is is an object from gidra.program.database.programdb. And if you just simply search, um, you know, the program db here, uh, you can see that which functions you have access to using this object so uh, you can get the compiler you can get the execute executable path the executable format you know the image base uh, max address mean address and lots of other things um, one of the things that I'm looking for because I want to get access to the to the all functions in the binary so um, I will use get function manager which will return an object and that object can give me access to the functions so here um, if i print fm uh, you you will see that it's an object from ghidra program database function function manager db and now the function manager db has uh, one of the functions, one of the function that it has is get functions. So I can actually, if I run this line, line 12, um, now I have all the functions in the binary. So let me just print all the function names. Get name. Yeah. So I print all the function names in, in this binary, you can see, but this is the function that I'm looking for. So here, um, I'm going to iterate uh, over all the functions until I reach the, the target function. Uh, because I want to save the time, so I will put the breakpoint on, at line 16, and I will jump... Okay, I think, let me run it again. Okay, and then 
put the break point at, at line 16. Okay, there we go. We are here. And if I print the function name, uh, you'll see that the target function is printed. And now I want to step into the create CFG function because I want to create a control flow graph for this specific function. So, all right, now we are here. Uh, in order to write this function, I take a look at um, the Ghidra source code. This is actually a uh, create graph. Create graph is the function I think that we are looking for based on the answers I got from the developers. Um, and I think this is where you have to look into. So inspiring from this uh, source code, I try to replicate uh, the same code in Python, um, you know, to write, uh, to create control flow graph. Um, so for the reference, you can take a look at, you know, this module and this function uh, inside that. Uh, okay. Now, uh, the the very, as you can see also in this, um, you know, in this function create vertex, vertices, you can see that it will call basic block, it will create an object, uh, a basic block model, and then uh, it will get uh, the address space of the function by using by using uh, you know that set of addresses uh, it will get all the basic blocks correspond and belongs to those address sets and then it can get access to all basic blocks inside the function so actually um, I want to do the same thing. So I will create um, a basic block model, an object from basic block model. Um, you have to actually pass the current program. And then um, you can get access to the body, the address space of the body of the function by using uh, function get body <laughs> so if I run this line now I want to um, return and get access to all the basic blocks correspond to that function so I will actually execute this line now code blocks iterators is an iterator to the sets of basic blocks and I can iterate over this set to get access to each basic block. Once I have the basic blocks, I can print the successors, the children and the predecessors, the parents to, you know, understand the relationship between blocks. This is how we can create the control flow. Um, Okay, so this was the logic behind the code. You can, um, I need, I need a, a library to create the graph. You can use uh, Graph Network X, which is a pretty useful library for creating graphs. It has lots of building functions that you can use. But for this tutorial, I decided to use directed sparse graph. Again, you can use anything you want. And now I will, in this line, I will iterate over all the blocks. Get access to the block. This is one of the basic blocks. If I want to uh, print the first address, the start address of the block, I can use the functions. Uh, let's first print the type of the block. The type of the block is Ghidra program model block code block imp. 
So here, uh, if I search for this specific class, class, so I can see which actually functions I have access to. Mm, get first start address will return the first start address of the code block, and I can you know use this function to uh, to print the start address of the block. And um, if I execute this line and print the address, you'll see that the address of the block is this. Okay, now I want to add this block to the CFG. Um, in order to do that, uh, you know, if you want to actually add the vertex, um, I have to create, uh, you know, an object of vertex from the block. So uh, you, I imported uh, vertex and edge objects from Ghidra Util Graph. Um, again, you can do it in many other ways, but this is the way that I did. Um, and now, after adding the block into the CFG, now it's time to print the children and the parents, the pre successors and the predecessors. So let's do that. Okay, now I have a set of children, set of parents, uh, set of predecessors, set of successors. Now I want to actually iterate over each block. Um, So source block. So I will again create a vertex object of that. I will add it to the CFG and I will create an object edge, which I want to actually connect and create edges between blocks, right? Um, because the control flow graph is a directed graph. Uh, so we have to mention like uh, the actually this the source and destination of the edge so because this is the parent so the the actually the edge should be from the parent to the block uh, this is our block and this is the parent so I, I just add the edge and you can again uh, print the source address uh, which is fine um, you can do the same thing for all the successors as well. You can iterate over all the successors, add them to the CFG, and create an edge. This time, from block to the children, because this is successors. So the edge should be from the block to the children. And then you can return the CFG. Um, as I mentioned before, this video uh, is created based on, you know, my knowledge and the responses I got from Gidra's developer. Again, if you find any issues, um, feel free to contact me and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you find this video useful, uh, please sub subscribe our channel uh, to view more videos. Thank you.